and Jade here, otherwise known as Scarlet Rebel. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all enjoying Beyond Light, I'm having an absolutely incredible time. And I wanted to pop in to make a video about the Destiny community doing what the Destiny community does best, and that is glitching into brand new areas. <laughs> So recently people have figured out a way to glitch into another area in Europa and they have found something really, really interesting and really, really cool that I'm not going to spoil or talk about at least in the first half of this video. But even if you haven't seen what people have uncovered, you've probably still seen people talking about it because everyone seems to believe that this area that people have been glitching into is the raid and of course it's brought up a lot of conversations about the world's first race being rigged or somehow unfair because now people have seen the inside of the raid and having glitched into it myself with my partner we did it literally last night neither of us believe that this area is actually a part of the raid and i wanted to do a quick video to kind of talk about all my reasons why just in case anyone had seen anything about it and was feeling a certain way about it and also just because i really don't think that this area is the raid and i wanted to give my reasons why because we all know you don't get points unless you show you're working. <laughs> so before we get fully into this, I just want to preface this by saying that the first half of this video is going to be completely spoiler free. And then the second half is going to get very spoilery. And I'm not even talking about things that could potentially be in the raid. I'm talking about lore. I'm talking about a potential future exotic quest. So the first half of this video, no spoilers at all. I will give a timestamp and alert everyone when I'm starting to get into spoilers and then the second half we're going to start to talk about more spoilery things in case you're like me and you've already kind of looked into the lore and stuff that isn't even accessible in the game yet if you already kind of know or if you're even not really all that bothered and you want to know all the other reasons why I think that this area is not the raid you can feel free to watch the second half and if you don't want to you don't have to but there are spoiler free reasons as to why I believe that this area isn't the raid so we're going to get into talking about that first so first things first here is a tweet from my partner Tristan if you've been watching for a while you have heard that name before because I talk about him all the time he put up this very excellent tweet this morning because we were talking about how you could talk about how the area isn't really part of the raid without even spoiling it which is honestly what inspired me to make this whole video in the first place this tweet essentially encapsulates my full thoughts so I just wanted to put that up before we kind of get into it, but I am going to kind of expand on all of these points a little bit more and even talk about some things that he didn't mention. And also, if you like hot takes on Destiny and if you already follow me, you should definitely follow him because we have very similar ways of thinking when it comes to the Destiny universe and I just think that would be really awesome. <laughs> Look, if I can't shout out my own boyfriend on my YouTube channel, then literally what is it even is the point? <laughs> so, first things first. The area that you actually glitch into, I believe, is actually offset or branches off of what myself and my partner believe is Clovis Bray's personal office or what once was Clovis Bray's personal office. Bray Exoscience, I believe is what it's called. There's a little office in there that has a lot of markers that, again, would be a little bit spoilery if I was to get into, but it has a lot of markers in there that very easily leads you to believe that it once was the office of Clovis Bray. The area that you glitch into, if you go backwards far enough, you can kind of see where it would attach to that office. So it would make more sense if this was something attached to a story mission or a strike, something centering Clovis Bray that was leading you down into the area that people have managed to glitch into from there. And people might say, well, that still might be part of the raid because you still might go through Clovis Bray's office to get to the raid because there have been areas before where you've started in a public area and have gone into the raid that way such as oryx and i believe the last wish as well and to that i say the deep stone crypt in the law is referenced as its own building which is why i'm hesitant to believe that the raid could still start at clovis bray's office maybe go through it i'll concede to that but there are reasons further on in the video that i think will back up why i don't quite believe that especially if this is a strike or a story mission or an exotic quest that is linked specifically to Clovis Bray as I believe it might be. Another strong piece of evidence is the fact that when you bring your ghost out to look at the name of the location you are constantly in creation. Creation is a part of the exoscience building, the Bray exoscience building where you can go into from Europa during the patrols. It never changes to the Deepstone Crypt, it never changes to an area that we don't already have in the map. It is constantly an area called creation. 
no matter what room you go into, no matter how far you go, you are always still considered to be in creation. And creation is essentially a lab area in the Exoscience building. So it would make sense, again, if it was a strike or a story mission. I am leaning a lot heavier towards story mission, if you can already tell. It makes sense if that was the case, that you would still be considered to be in the area that is called creation. Another little piece of evidence is the fact that you do encounter enemies if you glitch into it, but they are very low level. They're no different to the enemies that you come across on patrol and they're very easy to kill. If these were raid encounter enemies, you would expect them to be a higher light level, even if you were glitching in. Another piece of evidence, which is kind of the first thing that made me think that this probably wasn't the raid area or a part of the raid, is the fact that this area has planetary materials inside of it. The Glacial Stalwart, I think is what it's called for Europa, that planetary material, it's in this area and that's not something that they've ever done with raids before. Just having a planetary material inside of it, again, it speaks more to a mission or a strike or even just like a patrol area. Another thing as well that people haven't really been talking about, and this is kind of tied to, again, if you go back further in the area that you're glitching into, there's actually one of those stasis sealed doors, similar to the ones that you find in the story missions, where the more aspects of stasis that you unlock, you get to unlock these doors basically behind the little pyramid triangle type things. I don't think that that's something that they'd bother to put in the raid because if you're playing the raid you've most likely unlocked stasis and if for some reason you haven't unlocked stasis and you don't have access to it I don't know why they'd put that in the raid as as an unfair roadblock it just feels like a mechanic that doesn't need to be there. So again since we've seen these locked doors behind the little pyramids in the story missions leans a lot more towards being a story mission or an exotic quest or even a strike I can understand it being in a strike just because the strikes are probably exclusive to if you own Beyond Light, and if you own Beyond Light, you probably own Stasis, and etc, etc. But again, I'm still leaning more towards a story mission. And then the last thing, and this is really the biggest thing that makes me believe that this area doesn't have anything to do with the raid, is the fact that as of right now, um, at the 16th of November, um, it's Monday, so the raid is this Saturday. So I'm saying that in case Bungie do say something about it, but Bungie haven't said anything about the glitching. The world's first race is something that Bungie takes very seriously. It generates a lot of hype for the game and the community in general just really gets a kick out of it. They give out belts, they give out an exclusive coat if you manage to defeat it in the first 24 hours. They do the same thing with an emblem. A trail is probably gonna be dropping any minute now or sometime this week. They take the world's first race so seriously. So if people really have managed to glitch into the raid, I completely believe that Bungie would, you know, swing their hammer on that, would do everything they could to stop people from getting in or tell the people that have glitched into the raid you know if you're going for worlds first your your run is null because you've glitched into the area and you weren't supposed to see it until everyone else did again this could completely change they could say something like that but the fact that they haven't and they tend to at the very least address things like that very quickly even if they don't fix it straight away leads me to believe that they aren't worried about it because it's not actually a part of the raid so those are my kind of bullet point reasons as to why I don't believe that the room that everyone's been glitching into is part of the raid, and those are the spoiler-free reasons. I do honestly believe that this area is part of an exotic quest, and if you're planning on sticking around for the spoiler part of this video, I'll go into why in a lot more detail. It could still be a strike. The area itself has certain areas that you kind of drop down into, which is very evocative of a strike to me. So it could be a strike, especially with what they've found at the end. That could definitely be like the last encounter of a strike, but it just doesn't read as being the raid boss or a raid encounter or being any part of the raid for me. Something else I wanted to mention as well that I feel like a lot of people have forgotten, I haven't really seen a lot of people talking about it, is the fact that back during Forsaken, the raid for Forsaken was called Last Wish. And we got a lot of surprises during Forsaken. We thought that the Tangled Shore was going to be the only explorable area, but we actually got the Dreaming City based off of a quest line for that as well. So we had two brand new patrol areas. However, when the raid was beat, it kicked into gear lots of story things. For example, the Dreaming City, basically it unleashed a curse onto the city, which made it so that every three weeks would begin a new cycle. And as far as I'm aware, that hasn't even been broken yet. So you're talking like two years later, that's still a thing that's going on, all because the raid was beaten. And not only that, when 
the last wish raid was beaten we also got you know a new gambit map and we got a strike and we also got um three different story missions that again you got a different one every three weeks based on the um the curse cycle that was happening in the dreaming city so Bungie have done this type of thing before. They've done this type of thing where when the raid is beaten, new things in the world happen. I fully believe that this room and whatever's going to happen with this room is based off of the raid, whether it be something that everyone can access after the raid is beaten or if it's tied to the exotic quest or if it's a strike that again, once you know the Deepstone Crypt is beaten by whoever beats it, everyone gets to go into. It could be something like that and I, at this point, I'm heavily inclined to believe that it is going to be something like that. So now we are going to move into the spoiler full section of the video. So if you don't want spoilers for the raid or potentially for anything that's going to happen post raid, basically if you don't want spoilers for anything that isn't in the game at the moment and that includes lore and that includes story, look away now. I'm gonna leave a timestamp for when spoilers are over. If you want to hear my overall thoughts at the end, those will also be spoiler free, but I'm gonna start talking some heavy spoilers right now, specifically talking about why I believe that this room is tied to an exotic quest. Maybe a strike, but I'm gonna, for the sake of brevity, lean more in the direction of an exotic uh, quest, just because all the evidence kind of points that way as well. So this is your warning. Spoilers ahead, there's a timestamp on the screen right now that is telling you um, where to go to the end of the video just to hear my overall thoughts. So there you go. And let's get into it. So I'm playing um, the video of the area on the screen right now. Yes, I glitched into this last night with my partner. The area itself definitely feels more like a strike to me or just an overgrandized mission. It could still be a raid area and it could still be a raid encounter. I'm definitely not taking that off the table because I really don't want to be Boo Boo the Fool if this does still end up being the raid somehow. But seeing as it leads off of what I very strongly believe is Clovis Bray's office, it leads me to believe that it's not necessarily 100% tied to the raid, that it could be a strike or a mission. So now entering the room with the big exo head that everyone is talking about. First of all, this is fucking cool. This is incredibly awesome and I am so, so glad that Bungie have done something like this and have taken this big leap. This is awesome, this is cool, and when I first turned that corner and saw it, like, I was legitimately scared. I was, I, I legitimately, like, jumped. I had a moment. So, with the prayers out of the way, this room, to me, doesn't feel like a room for a raid boss. Again, it could be an encounter room. There have been smaller rooms for encounters and raids before, but for the boss, I just think it's too small. No, I'm not a raid connoisseur. I'll put my hands up and admit that, but I can use my eyes to watch other people do raids. <laughs> and from that, I can extrapolate that this doesn't feel like a raid boss room. It, it really doesn't. It's not big enough. I don't see areas where you could be doing something where you'd have to strategize without seeing enemies inside of it you know i can't say what would have to be done in there but it definitely feels again more like a strike or more like a mission it's just on the smaller side for me and that's one of the main things that's definitely definitely driving this idea that i don't think this is part of the raid and now i'm going to shift gears and kind of talk very mainly about this room being tied to an exotic quest because we're about to get into law spoiler territory at the end of the day i am like riding the high of this being an exotic quest. I really, 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 truly believe that down to my bones that this is an exotic quest or a quest of some kind. I'm gonna stop talking about it being a strike, but just know that I do believe that this could still be a strike tied to the mission, okay? I'm just putting that out there, but I'm gonna start talking about it as if it is strictly a mission and that is the number one thing that I believe. So getting into the meat of it, if you haven't already taken a Gander Ishtar Collective, who are an amazing resource, by the way. If you're watching this video and you know the Destiny lore, you should know Ishtar Collective. They have all of the lore on their website, including lore from Destiny 1. And they do a really good job of getting all the lore from drops, even before they're available in the game. They have everything from Beyond Light and they have everything from Season of the Hunt on there. And with that in mind, thanks to Ishtar Collective, we know that there are interactions with Banshee 44 in the tower in which he confirms that he is the Clovis Bray AI. So let's back this up and explain it a little bit. If you've played the story, you've got a basic idea of who Clovis Bray was. So without describing him in too much detail, this is a series of events that we know that kind of leads into Clovis Bray being Banshee. Clovis Bray uploads himself into an exo body 
and he uploads himself as an AI into the Deepstone Crypt. So there's two different versions of Clovis Bray that exist at any one time, essentially. However, the exobody that he uploads himself into wipes multiple times due to a Vex infestation in his system. And that is what causes the increase in the number at the end of his name. There's another lore book that hasn't been revealed in the game yet that pretty much confirms that the exo Clovis Bray uploaded himself into changes his name to Banshee. And not only that, but he is a far cry from the man who did horrendous things to his family in the pursuit for immortality. Furthermore, the book itself is called Legacy's Lament, which is a similar name to a sword called The Lament. It's safe to say that this sword is earned through the raid somehow, and is tied to whatever quest also grants the pages of the Legacy's Lament book. There's a very clear, very obvious connection there, so it does feel to me like it is some sort of quest line. You go into the raid, you get the quest from wherever you get the quest from, you go to Banshee, you go back and forth, you do different things, you collect things, you do whatever you have to do to, to get the quest, and every step you unlock pages of the Legacy's Lament book, and then at the end of the quest, you get the Lament Sword. That just makes sense, it just makes sense. Further proof that this could be a Clovis Bray-centric quest and or strike as opposed to being part of the raid is that the area myself and my partner believe to be Clovis Bray's office has evidence of the fact that it's his office. Didn't want to get into it into the first part in case these were spoilers, but the two very strong pieces of evidence that are in there is the statue of Banshee 44 on the desk. It looks just like him. We can guess, extrapolate that this is the exo body that Clovis Bray designed for himself. And also there is a picture of the statue within the pyramid, the one that looks like someone holding their arms out and they have a big cloth draped over them. Clovis refers to this as clarity control. It's part of his exoscience project and there's no way to kind of explain that more without like being really confused. <laughs> And then the kind of cherry on top of the cake for my theory that this is a exotic quest tied to Clovis Bray as opposed to being a raid encounter is the fact that there are interactions on Ishtar Collective that are from Banshee. You go to Banshee and you talk to him. The interactions themselves are labelled Lost Lament and everything in them reads like they're part of a quest line. In the very last interaction in which you, I would assume, get the sword. He refers to the big head thing being himself and he thanks us for protecting him, which sounds like the room where the big head is, we're actually gonna have to go in there and protect the head from whatever's trying to attack it. I would assume fallen and or vex. And again, that's just a really strong thing that makes me believe that this is a story mission over a raid encounters. In raid encounters, you tend to be achieving a goal of turning something on or killing something in order to progress. And I'm not saying that Bungie wouldn't create an encounter in which you have to protect something in a raid, but it sounds like the MO of a strike or a mission, especially one that's tied to an exotic. However, at the end of the day, only time will tell. Like I say, right now it is the um, 16th of November. It's Monday. It's a few days before the raid. The raid is on Saturday. So we'll really only know what that room actually is until we get into the raid or until the raid gets beaten. I basically believe that it is tied exclusively to an exotic weapon which is going to be part of the Deepstone Crypt. I fully believe that it's going to be tied to whatever the raid exotic is, whether that be earning it through a quest or again a strike or something like that. People are really starting to get irate about it to the point where they were starting to feel like the world's first, there was no reason in doing it and it was botched and etc etc. The world's first race is something that I really look forward to watching every single year. And it was kind of disheartening to see people, you know, cussing people who had glitched into the room out and seeing people glitching into the room specifically so that they could get a head start on the raid. Ultimately, this room is not the raid to me. It's not. So if everyone could <laughs> just put it down and kind of realise that and just enjoy the world's first race, what it is, a race between peers that is just fun to watch and we're all going to get to experience the raid together through Twitch and through streaming, wherever it is that people are going to be streaming it. I would really appreciate that. It is something that is fun to watch and fun to be a part of and let's just get back to doing that. Okay, let's just all agree <laughs> that the area that people have glitched into is not a part of the raid and we can just do the world's first race and stop attacking each other, please. <laughs> And that's everything from me, guys. I am planning on uploading my Season of Arrivals thoughts video very, very soon. I'm hopefully going to be filming that this week. After that, I'll try and get up something about my Beyond Light first impressions, especially after the raid comes out. And of course, Season of the Hunt starts tomorrow as well. So I hope you all enjoy that. I hope you all enjoy seeing Aldrin again. Remember, he did nothing wrong. 
the links for all my socials are down in the description if you want to see me yell along with the raid race i'll be doing that on twitter I hope you all have an absolutely lovely day and I hope you all enjoy the raid race on Saturday if you are attempting World's First yourself or watching it for the first time. Have an amazing time, have fun, be the World's First to fun if you don't think you can be the World's First to uh, beating the thing. And yeah, just enjoy yourselves guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!